This is the first of two videos that cover importing acquired logic analyzer data into a pattern generator module in the same logic analyzer unit. And in this case, I have one of our 16820 series logic analyzers. And that has the basic logic analyzer hardware that I'll do my data capture on. And it has a built-in pattern generator. And this pattern generator hardware is identical to that of the 16720A pattern generator module which you also might have uh, installed in a 16900 series mainframe. So regardless of the exact hardware you have, if you have this pattern generator from us, then uh, this process that I'll outline today will be essentially identical. Now, uh, I do have a companion document to this video, and this will come in as a handy reference. If you want to download that, there's the location. And I'm just going to step through this procedure. In this first video, we'll cover the CSV format, which has an upper limit on the number of vectors that you can generate, and that is 1 million vectors. So that's a bit simpler than the other alternative, which we'll cover in the second video, and that's the binary format. So if we export to a binary file and modify the binary file, uh, we can load that back into the pattern generator with an upper limit of 16 million vectors. So that would give us the full capability of the hardware, but a little less convenient. So let's get started. I'm going to go through these steps one by one, quickly talk about my setup here to begin. I have two buses defined here for my logic analyzer. This is my device under test. It's an 8-bit counter. And this is my clock for my device under test. And the lower 8 bits of pod 1 I have connected to that device under test. And I see my activity indicators show that the bits are toggling and it looks to be running well. And the upper eight bits, I have no activity. That's my pattern generator output. To, uh, it's called patgen. And when I run the pattern generator a bit later, we'll see activity there. And I hope to see the same exact activity that I'm capturing from my device under test. By the way, the clock that I'll use for that is this A2 clock. So I have the uh, pattern generator's clock pod. There's a clock output on that. And I've got that directly connected to the A2 input for the logic analyzer. I'll go over to my sampling tab, show that I am in state mode and using that A1 clock to sample data from the device synchronously. I am doing a 32k point deep acquisition, by the way. So I'll click OK there, go take a quick look at my trigger. It's zero. I, I want to trigger at uh, a known reference point. So I'm triggering when my counter gets to its maximum count of FF and transitions down to zero. So with all that said, I'll go ahead and do an acquisition now. I'll hit the Run button. And this is the data from my device under test. The top row here is the aggregate bus view. It counts up to FF and transitions to zero right at the trigger point. And I've got the MSB on top, LSB on the bottom. And all looks to be well with the acquisition. In the trace here, I've got the bus value versus time. And we can see the counter starting at zero and counting up to FF and repeating as expected. So that looks great. I'm ready to do my export. I'll go to File, Export, and select a standard CSV text file. Now note that I don't want to select a pattern generator CSV text file because that would export the contents of pattern generator memory, which is not what I'm trying to do. I want to populate that memory. So I want to export the logic analyzer data to this standard CSV text file. Now I've got a few options here. I, I want to make sure that this all data box is unchecked. I'll click the data range button. And either of these two buttons take me to the same range properties dialog. Under the data range tab, I can specify a subset of the data to export if I like, or just stay with all 32K points. And under bus signal selection, I want to make sure and deselect anything that I don't want to export. So I'm just going to select my device under test data, no time tags or anything like that. And now I just need to give it a file name. And it'll create my file called export.csv. And that's in the export files directory by default. Now, you don't want to open this CSV file in Excel. I'd recommend against that. Instead, just use a, a text editor like Notepad or whatever you have, whatever you like. I have this tool called Ultra Edit that I like. So I'll drag that CSV file into my text editor. And I see the first row there is the name of the bus. And I just need to do a, a return after that and insert this header information. So the pattern generator will be able to recognize it. 
And as mentioned in the document, you'll want to change this to meet your needs. In my case, I have my uh, pattern generator pod 3 connected to my logic analyzer. And I, so I want to send the data to pod 3. Now, you might want to change that to any number 1 through 6. And then I'm using all eight bits of that pod denoted by the 7 colon 0. And the last step to modifying this file is to go all the way to the end and insert the very last line here in step 11. Okay, now we're ready to save the file and import it. We can go back to the Logic Analyzer software and say File, Import. This time select a Pattern Generator CSV text file. Navigate to the file we just created. And it'll load that up into Pattern Generator memory. And we can confirm that by going to the sequence here. And it looks very good, looks identical so far. We'll, so we'll do a quick acquisition on this. I'll do a repetitive run, and so it'll sequence through this um, sequence of vectors. It'll repeat it indefinitely until I tell it to stop. So it is running now. And I'm ready to do my acquisition. Now, I do want to make a couple of changes before I do that. I want to go into my sampling setup and select the clock synchronous with the pattern generator rather than the logic analyzer or rather than the device under test that I started with. So I've got the right clock selected. My clock is active here, that's good. And now my upper eight bits are active. Again, confirming that my pattern generator is running. Okay, we'll go to the waveform view and we're not concerned with the DUT data so much anymore. We'll focus on the lower portion of the screen here, which is my pattern generator. And I want to trigger on a value, the same value that I did before, to get a good comparison. And uh, we'll do a don't care there for the original dot. Now we're ready to acquire. Takes a moment to initialize, and now we see we've got a very good looking set of data there. Everything looks good so far. And if we wanted to, we could do a, a comparison on this using the compare tool. I, I won't take the time to do that now, but I have gone through that exercise and confirmed that all 32K uh, vectors are faithfully reproduced. So that I get the exact same data that I acquired from my device on the output of the pattern generator. So that's all there is to it. And again, in the next video, we'll be covering the binary format with the 16 meg vector limit.